So now in theaters, uh, pardon the pardon the car. I'm not homeless. I'm just a, a little bit early for a film that I'm going to see and then come back in the car and review. Now in theaters is the menu. If you are someone who's been a frequent theater goer for the last few months, there's very little chance you didn't see a trailer for the menu. And now the side note, this has nothing to do with the film itself, but I, I don't know if you're like me, but I, I go to the movies a lot or I try to, and I, I theoretically enjoy trailers, but... Lately, it seems like you're getting the exact same trailers in front of every movie you see. And if you go a lot like me, you see them so often they, number one, kind of ruin plot points for the movie. And number two, for me, they start to actually, actually actively turn me against the movie because I get so sick of seeing the trailer. The Menu was one of those movies. So I went to see this movie to basically uh, know that at least I wouldn't be getting a trailer for The Menu in front of The Menu. And it, I started hearing rumblings that it was interesting. So what's this movie about? This is Rafe Fiennes, stars as a very uh, top-of-his-game chef who has a very, very exclusive restaurant on a private island. It's $1,200 a plate, and all of these various uh, wealthy people and foodies take the plunge and get on the boat and go to this very exclusive, very high-minded, intellectual menu that is served over the course of an evening. Five courses, I want to say it is, over the course of an evening. And things don't quite go the way they all thought it was going to go. Now, the original trailer for this film, and again, the trailer isn't the movie, but that plays into how and why a lot of us see these things. The original trailer for the film didn't really tell you much about it other than it was this very, very high-end dining experience. Maybe there was a little bit of a twist in there that told you what else might happen. The second trailer really does tell you where it's going to go. I'm not a trailer, so I'm not going to tell you where it's going to go, other than things don't go the way that everybody thinks they're going to go when they pay $1,200 a plate. This is good. This is a thriller. I will say that. This is very much a film for food people. The food is photographed beautifully. The, uh, the talk about food is very accurate to that world, the world of very high-end, uh, expensive cuisine and fine dining. And you get sort of a cross-section of people who are these uh, people who are along for the ride, these people who have paid the money to experience the titular menu. Uh, among them are uh, the, the main couple that basically introduces us into the story and we follow are Nicholas Holt and Anna Taylor-Joy, who you may remember from many, many things, including for me, Last Night in Soho was the, my, my favorite film from last year that she was in. Anna Taylor-Joy is sort of the normal person in this movie. She is the person there for the uh, the members of the audience who don't know this world, don't experience this kind of world. And she was the person who was saying what I thought throughout the movie. So sometimes something would be presented and she's like, uh, we're going to get any actual food here? I'm kind of hungry. This is not real food. Uh, and then everybody else is really Nicholas Holt, her her date her partner is there for the the experience he's the one who uses all the the intellectual phrases and is giddy and is uh just almost lapping at the heels of ray fimes to to be in his good favor you have john leguizamo as a uh Formerly hot actor, hot in terms of popular actor, who's looking to do a food travel show and he's going there with his assistant. You have an older couple, uh, the female of which is played by Judith Light, who everybody might remember as Angela from Who's the Boss. You have uh, a trio of like dude bro, finance, rich young guys who are, as soon as I saw them on screen, I, I leant over to Val and I'm like, so these guys are going to die, right? And uh, you, you may have, uh, then you, I think that might be everybody. You have an old lady in the corner who's mysterious. And as it goes, more and more is revealed about what everybody is doing there, why they're there, and how the evening is ultimately going to end. This was good. It reminded me of other films uh, very, very vaguely in terms of what Fines is up to in the film. But it uh, surprised me and went in directions I didn't quite expect. And uh, it's darkly funny, very dark comedy. And I thought it was pretty good. If you're a food person, if you're someone who has delved into this world, it uh, is a very dark, sly skewering of that world. Everybody in the film is very good. Uh, nice to see, as I say, Judith Light again. And overall, I quite liked the menu. This is this period of time right now, pre-Christmas holiday season, where the studios are putting out a lot of smaller films. They're putting out non-blockbusters. And this is probably going to get pushed out of the theaters as soon as, you know, Avatar and the and the movies that are hoping to be big come out. So in theaters now, I would recommend... Uh, not going on an empty stomach or going to a theater that serves you good food because you're going to want to eat when you watch this film. This is The Menu.